hey, we all have limitations, and you know what your limitations are. So don't forget, don't be afraid to ask for some help if you need it. Okay, in this video I'm going to do a recap of all the things that I've done in the primers and kind of answer some questions that have come along since I've made those videos and one of the things that I'm going to address first here is uh, there's been some issues regarding uh, system voltages whether 12 volts or 24 volts or 48 volts or if it even matters and I've had like two or three people say that I make the uh, assertion in a roundabout way that you don't have to use as many batteries for a 48 volt as a 12 volt for the same kilowatt hours, which is not true. I think a lot of people don't understand the uh, wire sizes and how they come into play with voltage, so I've provided a link in the video underneath uh, underneath the video in the description there to southwire.com and it has a voltage drop calculator for your wiring I've got a screenshot of it here for you to look at <clears throat> so let's look at uh, this first screen here where you can see here that it's got uh, phases which is always a single phase in our case uh, conductor I always use copy installation whether it's buried or overhead that kind of thing doesn't really matter much but your input parameters in this case I did 12 volts and you never ever ever want your voltage drop to be any greater than 10 percent now in, um, in in theory you never want it to really drop below 1 percent but I've always used a 10% rule myself so that's where we get this maximum voltage drop that we enter in the calculation here for our theoretical circuit here we're saying that our length that we need to go is 25 feet and we're going to run a 360 watt device at the end of this run so for a 12 volt setup it's going to run vertical 30 amps at the end of this wire and that'll add up to 360 watts. So, according to Southwire uh, analysis, whenever we do that, it's going to come back and say that we'll have one conductor per phase, which is always the case here. But for this 360 watt device that we're going to power, it requires a three aught triple aught wire copper conductor to keep your voltage drop to 1.1 percent or less when supplying 30 amps for a 25 foot run on a 12 volt system so that's three aughts now a lot of you guys out there are going to say oh that's 30 amps i only need to run a number 10 wire which is true if you were running a 110 volt or a 240 volt wire to a device out there because the wire drop is calculated at around 1.2 percent, 2 percent, somewhere around there. Um, so that's true in the case of a higher voltage, but on a lower voltage at 12 volts, to keep that voltage drop around 1 percent, 2 percent, you're going to have to run that on a on a three aught wire to go that 25 feet to keep your voltage drop down. 
If you're using anywhere smaller than that, you're literally starving that device for amperage. And as a result, your wattage will even go down. Now, in the case of a heating element, it's not a big deal, but if you're running a motor at the other end of this circuit, it's going to cause that motor to work harder and it'll run slower. So that's something you got to take into effect. So now on this system at 12 volts for a 360 watt device, we're using a 3 aught copper wire. Now if we go to 48 volts on this and I put in here my maximum volt drop would be 4.8 per, or 4.8 percent here. Um, the current at the end of this cable run is only seven and a half amps because seven and a half times 48 is 360 watts. We're still running the same wattage for the device at the end of this run. So it, once we run that through their wire calculator, we see here that we only need a number 14 wire to run this 360 watt device on the other end. Now number 14 wire at a higher voltage is good for up to um, uh, 15 amps. Well, we're only pulling seven and a half amps, which is half that. We should be able to run this on a 16 or an 18 gauge wire uh, for that distance, but that would be at like 120 volts, 240 volts, that kind of thing. But on a 48 volt system, I can use a number 14 wire to power a 360 watt device at the end of this 25 feet, where if you're running 12 volts, to keep your voltage drop low enough for it to adequately power that, you have to run a 3 aught wire to keep the voltage at a good enough usable level for the device on the end of that. So these are the things that I'm talking about uh, whenever you're, you're setting up your system. If you're going to design a system, if you don't mind using this monstrous wire all over the place, that's fine. But smaller wire is easier to work with and it's much cheaper. If you go down to the, your hardware store and price the difference between 3 out wire and 14 gauge wire, 25 feet, uh, two directions for a total of 50 feet for two conductors, you're, you're going to be spending a whole lot more money on that copper for the heavier wire than you will for the smaller wire. That's the reason I always recommend the higher voltage because your wiring will have less voltage drop to accomplish the same amount of work. If they had 120 volt DC systems out there with inverters, the inverter wouldn't even need a transformer. It would just simply be a DC to AC conversion. So that's why I'm a proponent of higher voltages. Now the other thing that I want to look at here is uh, I had one of my subscribers, Adolfo, uh, send me a, a spreadsheet of all the battery calculations and the solar panel calculations uh, from my previous uh, how-to videos. And uh, he's, he's put a lot of work into this. Now, it doesn't take into account anything that you would do to size an inverter because when you size an inverter, uh, you're taking the maximum amount of power that you would use at one time and that determines the size of your inverter. For example, in my case, I use a 2000 watt water heater that can come on or off at any point and any time during the day when I'm making excess power and the water well, which also uses 2000 watts uh, when it runs on. So that's a total of 4000 watts that can come on without me really having any control over it. So my inverter is rated at 4400 watts. That, that gives me a 400 watt overhead and then the water heater will drop out if the voltage starts to go down below that. So the surge capacity in the inverter handles all that just fine. But when you're sizing your inverter you want to use the maximum amount of power that you'll pull at one given time from any possible devices within reason. So um, that's the reason this spreadsheet doesn't handle this. So what we're going to do now is uh, I've got the spreadsheet from Adolfo here and we'll zoom up on that 
and we'll we'll get into it right away. So you'll see the screenshots here. So we'll we'll go ahead and bring that up now, and you can see here that uh, it says that you change only the cells in orange. That's this cell, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and this one. So we're going to cover these. This top one up here determines the size of your battery bank. It won't determine the size of your uh, solar array, at least not directly. So you're going to have the reserve days that you want, and that's what we talked about in the, the battery video, how many days that you want to go consecutively without any recharging. And then your battery bank voltage here, uh, you can make that 12, 24, 48, 72, 120, whatever you want. And then this is your total kilowatt hours from your kilowatt meter. Now, some meters will automatically do that over a 24 hour period, in which case you just leave this 24 hours. If it doesn't, then what you have to do is you hit the button that says kilowatt hours, and it'll tell you how many kilowatts the meter is consumed or not the meter but the device you're measuring and then this one on the meter would say um, for instance uh, 12 hours and 45 minutes well in that case here you would put 12.75 hours because 45 minutes is three quarters of an hour then you hit enter on that and then you'll see all these things across here change you'll see all these all these things in the spreadsheet that change automatically so it does all these calculations for you I'll hit enter now and you can see our kilowatt hour dropper day changed the battery bank size uh, the watt hours of our PV panels all of this stuff has changed and that's what I really like about it Adolfo really did a lot of hard work on this thing and I'll change this back to 24 hours now so if we have all of this here and you wanted to do the same thing on uh, say a 24 volt system I changed this to 24 and right now for a 50 percent depth of discharge that I'm, I would be willing to do on the batteries at 48 volts is 521 uh, amp hours but whenever I changed it to 24 that doubled to 1024 or to 12 volts it goes to well, the word volts is not supposed to be in there. Take that out. And then the battery bank is 2,083 amp hours. So the lower the voltage, the bigger the amp hours of the battery bank has to be to deliver the same kilowatt hours of use over time. So we have the total kilowatt hours read on a kilowatt meter. That what I sized mine for about two and a half kilowatt hours per day now I actually generate and consume closer to 25 kilowatt hours a day but that's for the water heater the stove uh, the washing machine all the stuff that we run during the day that doesn't hit the battery bank at all so what I use for the batteries is about two and a half kilowatt hours um, uh, Per day that I that I go into so if I change this back to 48 and hit enter you can see that my my battery bank for a 50% discharge needs to be 521 amp hours and I think I've got like a three-day reserve on my system yeah so that's 313 hours 391 hours my uh, my battery bank is 410 amp hours I believe so I'm sort of between the 40 and 30 here, but if I cut back, I'm really able to make that last a lot longer. Uh, you also see here it shows how many kilowatt hours of production that you're going to need to produce each day. Uh, some people, they want to be able to run everything off the battery, and if you did 26 kilowatt hours a day like I do, and you assume you're going to do a lot of that on the battery, now all of a sudden your bank is huge. So that's why I'm able to get away with a lot smaller battery bank than the average Joe. I just engineered mine a lot different. You come down here and these are your 
state of charge whether it's a hundred percent down to ten percent you never want to go below fifty after that you start damaging your battery uh, you have the voltage readings for 12 volts, 24 and 48 volts and up here as you can see it says consult your battery specs because some batteries do vary between manufacturer but this gives you a good idea uh, the device stated amps say so if you've got a device that uh, pulls 15 amps and uh, you go over here and uh, you can see at 120 volts, that's 1800 watts, or if it's 240 volts, it's 3600 watts. It'll even do it for uh, DC voltages, so if you put in 12 volts here, um, you'll see that 15 amps at 12 volts is only 180 watts. So all of these calculations come up pretty automatically. I really like this spreadsheet. Uh, you'll see this spreadsheet. It's also uh, listed at the bottom of the video in the description. I've put in the URL where you can download this spreadsheet to your computer. It's in Microsoft uh, Excel format and uh, you can run all your calculations with this. You can change one figure and it'll it'll change everything everywhere else so that you don't have to run all these calculations by hand like I had it in those original videos. Uh, the final thing that I want to say here is on the PV calculation. Uh, of course it shows here your daily kilowatt hours needed and then how many watts of PV panels that you need uh, to accomplish that and then your sun hours. Uh, what I want to say on the sun hours is you can get it from this website here that's uh, sunrisesunset.com uh, my personal experience is there's a lot more wisdom in going out and driving a stake where you're going to have your array and then go out there in the morning as soon as the sun starts to rise and you actually have sunshine hitting that stake and start that as your time so if it's at 6.30 in the morning you put 6.30 there and then if the sun sets once there's no more sun shining on it if that's 6.30 p.m., then you do 18.30, and then you subtract 6.30 from 18.30 to get your half sun hours per day. You divide that by two, and then you get your total sun hours, and that's how you do that. So again, big credit to Adolfo. Thank you for contributing this, and uh, if there's any more questions, post them down there, and we'll discuss them. That's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next week or next month or whenever I get to it. I always answer questions whether posted publicly or privately. See you then.